This is Jim with Twisted Hobbies, and today we're building the Laser 200. Okay, we have the plane itself with all the parts. We have the manual that I downloaded and printed off from online. There's a link on the product page. Uh, we have the power combo. We have the receiver, and we have my favorite adhesive, which is foam tack. You can use lots of adhesives, but foam tack is my favorite. The power combo comes with the servos, the ESC, and the prop and motor. The receiver is separate. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is open up the box, lay out all the parts, get a good inventory, and then we're gonna fold over all of our surfaces and hold them like that for about an hour. This is a perfect time to set up the receiver and zero out the servos, calibrate the ESC and verify that the motor is going in the correct direction. There is a link in the description to a more detailed video of that process. Now we're gonna glue the wings on and you'll notice I got out my parchment paper and you'll see that when I glue these together, I put the glue on, I touch them together, I pull it apart for about a minute, and then I push it all the way together for a permanent fix. Now we're gonna move on to the wing spars. So there's one that goes across the leading edge on the front, and then there's one that goes into the wing. When you do the one in the wing, you're gonna have to open it up where you did glue the wings on. And I do that right there. and then trim it to size with the dry fit and then give it some foam tack and it goes right in. You can also use CA glue on this, but I really prefer foam tack for this application. Next up, I'm looking for my aileron spars. I find those, dry fit them, trim them to size, and then fill those in with adhesive and get them down as flush as possible. I also wanna make sure that these are drying perfectly flat, so I put some batteries on it to hold everything down. Now we're working on the leading edge of the aileron and down the side. I marked it there and uh, just broke it off, applied glue, and that went pretty straightforward. This video also applies to the Super Extra. The only real difference is that these uh, bend all the way around instead of getting cut. Next up is gonna be the nose of the plane, the rest of the horizontal fuselage. And now I'm gonna be looking for the stiffeners that go along the edge of that. And I couldn't find the 140 millimeter ones. And it turns out that's because they are 150 millimeters. You just have to trim them to size. So get those into place, trim them to size. Once the dry fit's done, then they get glued in. And now we're gonna be moving on to the assembly for the full floating horizontal stabilizer. So I'm gonna cut these pieces loose. I'm gonna grab the carbon fiber tube. I did have some issues getting this control horn slid onto here. So I used a 7 64th inch drill bit to ream it out a little, and then I was able to slide it on. Now we just start to assemble everything and lay it out. You wanna make sure that everything's in the right place. Once you get it all set up into place and aligned perfectly, then you're able to start gluing it where it needs to be glued. There are some areas that don't get glue, so make sure you check the manual for that. And don't glue the elevator control horn at all until a much later step uh, when we get to doing those push rods. You'll see here I use some carbon fiber pieces as a spacer to keep the space clear while it's drying. And now we're gonna be moving on to the horizontal fuselage stiffeners. They get dry fit, trimmed, glued in place. And 
And if everything's lined up perfect, you should be able to measure from wing tip to tail tip. And it all should be lined up. Next, I'm heading to the hardware bag for the aileron stiffeners and the control horns for those. So again, dry fit, trim, and then glue into place. Make sure your holes for your control horns are over your hinge line. And then we'll work on the bracing for the ailerons. So these foam pieces go in there and then we get our carbon fiber supports. The manual does give sizes on these, but I like to put one in and then cut it off. That way I'm sure to have it be the exact right size I'm looking for. And I just put it into the slot, put a little glue in there. And then make sure to hold it down to keep everything flat. And as you see here, I'm using some sharp diagonal cutters in order to trim these. If I was working with something a little thicker, then I would probably use a Dremel tool cutoff wheel type of thing to cut those. Now we're going to be working on the lower vertical fuselage. It has a carbon fiber piece that runs through it. I'm going to first tack on that little piece of foam there for the tail skid. And then on here, I had to open it up just a little bit more because it wasn't sitting as flush as I would like it. Just be careful you don't cut all the way through it. Then we put some batteries on it to hold it in place while it dries. And then this is a great time to make sure that your servos are the right size for the holes that you have. I had to go in and cut mine a little bit bigger. And I found that if you trace around with a pencil, then that gives you a pretty good guide to use to open up those holes. I'm using a piece of metal here just as a straight edge. I'm gonna do the same thing with the servos for the vertical fuselage. Put it together and then figure out how big those servo pockets need to be. And then just cut them to size. This is much easier than trying to do it while the plane's together, because once it's three-dimensional, it's hard to get the exacto blade in there. And once we get all those cut out, we are ready to glue the bottom of the vertical fuselage to the horizontal fuselage. So I take out all those little tab pieces. I put some foam tack all the way down and then I get it lined up. I'm definitely going to be using a square here to make sure everything stays square the entire time. Uh, I do that measurement hundreds of times as I put this together to make sure it stays straight. Now we're gluing on the pieces that the wing struts go into. And then we'll find the wing struts, put these supports in, and then start putting in all of the struts. I dry fit them, I trim them to size. Again, using that square is gonna be essential to make sure it all stays straight. Okay, now that those are all done, the next thing that we're gonna be doing is the bracing that goes down the fuselage. And these first two here go into the little white piece that the wing struts went into. And you'll see here that I'm just dabbing it in some foam tack and putting it into place after I dry fit. And now we're cutting the rest of the pieces as per the manual and fitting those into place. You'll see I continue to use the square to keep everything aligned. 
And in the manual, they actually show the the wrong parts here. They show the landing gear pieces instead of the fuselage reinforcement pieces. But it's pretty clear which one goes on there because they only fit into the little dimples one way. So those go in, then your landing gear go through. Then we're going to put some more carbon fiber bracing up towards the front. Be a little careful with this one up here right at the nose because you want to make sure that you still have room for your motor mount. Mine got a little bit close. Now we're ready to install our servos. So I'm going to get this one placed in and it fits perfectly because I made sure it was going to beforehand. And then we're going to get our differential horn taken care of. On the differential horn, they have you actually pin the servo horn onto the differential horn using a piece of carbon fiber. So I just grabbed a scrap that I had, opened up the hole a little bit with my pin vise, glued it in place, and then trimmed it. I recommend putting on these clevis ends before you screw it onto the servo. Uh, you also see I had to open it up there just a little bit because there wasn't enough room. So I used my pin vise to open that up and then it's ready to go and easy to put into the plane. The horns face forward on that. Then we'll do the push rods and this and the clevises are adjustable. So we glue these brass threaded pieces on and then we thread on the clevis end. And then I mount them on the ailerons and then trim them to size. The manual shows these as being 125 millimeters, but I found that was a little too short. And here you have to elevate the plane off of the table and keep it all flat, because that way you can get those adjusted to the perfect place and make sure that your wings are in line with your fuselage. Then we were able to install our other servos and then do a dry fit on the upper part of the vertical fuselage. And you can see here, I do a little bit more trimming out because once you get it all together, it always fits a little different. And you don't want to glue it together and then realize that stuff's being pushed apart too much. So once that's fitting perfect, then we're able to glue it. I believe I also glued the aileron servo in place at this point. Um, I'm waiting on gluing in the other servos until I get their servo horns on because it's a little easier to move them around before they're glued in. Now there are two vertical stiffeners that go through the vertical fuselage. And these are a little bit difficult to thread through. And I hit them with some foam tack to get them there. And then it's a little hard to get foam tack into the, the bottom part of it. So I believe I used some CA glue to, to fill that in just because it's really hard to get to. Then making sure everything is square, forcing it together as the foam tack sets up. And now we're working on the servo horn extender for the elevator. And it's done the same way. You could also just use a screw through this, but the, the pinning with the carbon fiber piece is a pretty elegant way to do it. We put the clevis end on there because it's easier to do when it's off the plane, and then we attach it to the servo. Then we're ready to start on our push rods. We're gonna cut apart those push rod guides. Then we're gonna put the brass threaded pieces onto the end of the push rods with a little bit of CA. And then we open up each of these little push rod guides because Mine were a little bit small to thread on, so that made it a little easier. And then we put six of those on each push rod. Next, you'll see me put this tiny little white piece inside of the clevis. That's gonna hold on to the push rod. Get the control horn. Thread on the clevis. And put that together. Then with each of those at 90 degrees, I know exactly how long that push rod needs to be and I can trim it to length. And then I glue in each of the push rod guides. A Little bit of CA glue and then we are done with the push rod for the elevator. And now onto the rudder. It needs three carbon fiber reinforcement pieces and a control horn. 
I dry fit these into place and I did need to cut the slots a little bit deeper so that they would sit a little more flush. And then we fill that with some foam tack, put on the control horn, and then let it dry flat. While that's drying, that's a good time to put on our motor mount and work on the landing gear. And when I started cutting out these wheel pants, I realized that my X-Acto blade wasn't very sharp, so I went and got a new one. And these plastic pieces glue right into the wheel pants. Now we're ready to glue on the rudder. Make sure and put a battery underneath it. That way it holds it up off the table while the glue is setting. Then we can install the control horn on the servo. No need for a servo extension on this. Then I thread on the clevis, attach it, put all those pushrod guides into place. And then I'm going to attach the other clevis onto the control horn for the rudder, cut the pushrod to length, and glue it in. Then we'll install those top side force generators. And then the wheel pants. Then go in the electronics. So I'm putting on the motor, the ESC and the receiver. And there's two more carbon fiber supports on the vertical stabilizer. And then we're ready to balance and install our prop. And you can get this prop balancer and prop installation tool at Twisted Hobbies. Looks like it's all balanced with just a little bit of tape. Then I do a little bit of wire management and just tidy it up, glue on the receiver. And then I've got a buddy that always asks me, he's like, how much does your plane weigh whenever I make a new plane? So I decided I'd weigh it, came in at 147 grams without the battery. Then we need to set the CG and we do this at 255 millimeters back from the front of the motor mount. I just put a little pencil dot there so that way I know where to balance it. And I move the battery until I get it balanced. Put your Velcro on and then you are done with the build. Okay, for this maiden flight, I just want everybody to know I am not the best pilot for 3D and there's a little wind going on. So really here, I'm looking to make sure that the trim is set right and that my CG is set right. And right out of the box, uh, the, the trim is really nice. I made sure everything was centered when I put it together. So when I'm flying, I'm really looking to see where it's pulling as I'm applying power. And it is just really well balanced overall. Uh, it is super nimble and there is just the slightest of breeze and uh, this really feels it. So this is definitely going to be a dead calm outdoor plane or for use indoors for me. We will put a link in the description to some amazing 3D flyers uh, and even some 4D flyers that have a reversing ESC that allow it to fly backwards and do crazy stuff. So uh, this is not that, this is just me playing around, seeing how it reacts and uh, I am loving it. It does exactly what I want it to do and the roll rate on it is just incredible. It feels like it flies inverted just as well as it flies right side up. The hover is perfectly balanced and easy to do. And the I love the way that it does the aileron roll because over half the wing is made up of aileron, so it really spins around quick. 
For this flight, I am using a 2S 500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, you can go all the way up to 3S if you're interested in doing that, uh, but I think it does fantastic on 2S. I hope that this video helped you putting it together, and I hope that you enjoy your Laser 200 as much as I do.